Hi there and welcome back to another review. So sticking with that whole 36 chamber vibe, I've done the first film, we've had a look at the second movie, I thought I might as well round the trilogy off, get the trilogy done and have a look at the third part uh, today with uh, Disciples of the 36th Chamber. Now we'll go ahead and say right away, right off the bat, this out of the three, this is probably my least favourite of the movies. Still enjoy this film very, very much, there's still a lot to be enjoyed here. Um, but it's probably my least favourite. Um, I think the films, if you was to put them in order in terms of what I enjoy the most, it's probably they probably do go in order. It probably goes one, two, and three in terms of which one uh, is best to worst. Um, but I say I still enjoy. There's a lot to be enjoyed here, and I do enjoy this movie very, very much. But um, there's a lot to be said about this movie, and a lot that's really quite interesting, especially with what um, the time it was made, uh, the people, you know, the story, and everything like that. This was actually made in 1985. Now, that is quite an odd time for a traditional uh, kung fu movie to happen. I mean, this was five years after the sequel. This is seven years after the original. And 1985, that period in Hong Kong, Hong Kong movies, it wasn't traditional kung fu movies. That was not the thing to do. You know, it was cops and robbers. It was guns. It was modern day action. It was films like Police Story, films like Yes, Madam you know, later on, like, the line of duties and films like that. So that, you know, to do a traditional kung fu movie and go back to sort of something that was a hit five years ago, seven years ago, it's quite a bold move to do that. It really is. You know, like I say, it was the Hong Kong box office was mainly dominated uh, by, you know, like I say, the Hong Kong, like the modern day cops and robbers action movies. So what is interesting is that amazing is during that peak of all that, look how Lung decided to make a third part in his 36 Chamber saga. Now, two interesting things about this movie is that Gordon Liu is in it, yes, but he is not the lead. Gordon Liu is in it because you think he's the like the guy who sort of connects the whole uh, saga of movies, but he is not the lead in this movie. That role goes to Sal Ho as Fong Sai Yuk, and also Liu is now back playing the monk Santi from the original movie. So... In many ways, the trilogy has sort of gone full circle because in the second movie, he plays Santi in the first movie. In the second movie, at one point, he's a guy who's impersonating the guy that he was playing. And then in this movie, he's back as the guy he was playing in the original, if that makes sense. But a lot of movies do that. When I talk about going full circle, a lot of people, a lot of filmmakers, when it is a trilogy, more often than not, when they get to the third part, they will somehow connect it to the first movie. It will somehow always link back so it's gone full circle like there'll be a plot element or a certain connection that will link it back to the first movie and that's sort of what Lu Ka Lung does here. Obviously, absolutely love Sal Ho. Uh, I will be reviewing uh, Mad Monkey Kung Fu very, very soon, uh, which is one of my all-time favourite collaborations between him and Liu Kalung. And thankfully, it's on. It's, that's in this box set uh, from Arrow, the Shaw Brothers Volume 2 Blu-ray collection, because uh, Mad Monkey Kung Fu is a firm favourite of mine for a hell of a long time and still is. Um, probably... Probably out there, one of my favourite Liu Ka Lung movies, um, Mad Monkey Kung Fu, but I will be uh, reviewing that one uh, very, very soon. So the Fong Sai Yuk character that Sal Ho plays, uh, obviously given much more wider appeal in the Jet Li movie that I reviewed uh, previously. Now, the thing about Sai Yuk in this movie, not Sal Ho himself, because I absolutely love uh, Sal Ho, but the, not nothing to do wrong with his performance or anything like that. But the character himself is that he is arrogant, right? Fong Sai Yuk in this is extremely arrogant, like all the time. And he doesn't really ever, it's not like he learns a lesson in the movie. Um, he doesn't want to learn, largely due to the fact he is like an accomplished fighter anyway. Always thinks he knows better. He's largely getting his own way and showing off all the time. Uh, the whole idea is that notion of trying to teach him and the potential of what he could be rather than sort of what he is now. Because that's what, usually with kung fu movies, the 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 guy who's learning can't doesn't know much kung fu or he doesn't he knows basics. Here, Fong Se Yuk Sel Ho's character, the lead. He's quite an accomplished fighter already. Like, he can already sort of handle himself, um, but he's very sort of headstrong in his ways. Um, 
but the old idea is what he could be rather than what he is. In many ways, he sort of borders on unlikable, um, unfortunately, in the sense you think sometimes when you stop jumping to like conclusions and listen to your master. Um, but say your character in this is nothing but headstrong and can fight and, and already has, I mentioned, has a reputation for being a great fighter. And full credit to Lord Cullen that with each installment of the trilogy that we get a different lead and like a different character taking centre stage and it involves a different character rather than just like sort of retreading old ground. And Sel Ho here is perfect as ever and is the perfect choice to play that cocky, arrogant Fong Se Yuk. So as I say, a much later kung fu movie in terms of like i say the era it was made the film opens with a sort of montage of say yuk's previous challenges like challenges and then we go to him at school where he's like why did god just not give us rain and not ice and snow and the kids are like why don't you just eat poo then as according to you it's sort of all the same so <laughs> really um just sort of where he's sort of arguing with these like these other kids about you know what's retiring understands the connection brain of water and then they're like well why don't you just eat poo then because according to you it's all the same thing so just establishing it, so he's a bit of a troublemaker and he's not exactly super bright. Um, he gets punished and draws on his fellow students' faces with ink who are all much younger than him, I might add. So it's, it's like his dad's school and the education inspector is coming and have to love the guy as he is like the, the, ins the inspector that comes. <laughs> he's like the rudest inspector ever. Like he is like this guy, the one who's coming to inspect the school. He is just a complete ass. Like you hate him already. Um, he's just a written you you could ever meet. He's like the he's like the big students stink and the little ones have bad breath. Um, of course, Sayuk takes it upon himself to mock the inspector. I mean, this is a Cantonese school and the inspector is a Manchu. Uh, well, I mean, I mean he has to be, doesn't he? The Manchus are always the villains uh, in these movies. Any you know anyone anyone rude, mean, or a bit of an ass is in a kung fu movie guaranteed uh, they're a Manchu. We have Lily, uh, Lily Lee in this movie playing Sayuk's mum, who I'm sure many of you remember. She's been in a number of Shaw Brothers movies, but you'll probably, if you've seen uh, Jackie Chan, she was the, the girl that fights with the dress in Young Master. That's who uh, Lily Lee is. Um, she, uh, she's in this movie. So proving what a bit of an arrogant lad Fong Sayuk is, he, he meets Gordon Lou Santee and right away he starts on him, accusing him of like damaging his kite. Like doesn't let the poor rabbit explain. Uh, Sayuk just basically has a go at him completely. Just, just tears, he's, I'd say he's a very hot-headed guy and sometimes over the course of the movie where he sort of doesn't ever settle down, he doesn't ever sort of, oh, okay, let me hear your side of the story first. He's very much a hothead. Uh, doesn't let people explain themselves and, as I say, just tears into people sometimes. We have a group of Manchus led by the director Lil Kao Lung here as like a small role who are out fishing and fish out a golden carp to which Sayuk sort of snatches away and Santi tries to sort of defuse the situation because he helps him out a lot, Santi. He's like trying to, trying to make sure he doesn't get into any trouble. Uh, you have to love how they tie up Say Yuk at school at one point so he can barely write anything as well, which I found quite funny. And Sal Ho, I'm um, talking about him, he, he's one of these people we never really got. I mean, he, I think I read somewhere that Sal Ho, um, I think Luke Lung said he was the most gifted uh, performer that he had ever worked with. Like, he was just perfect in everything he'd done. And much the same... Just, just he's moved much in the same way like when you think of like you and Bue, like could do any flip, somersault, kick perfectly. I think Selho very much akin to that, very much similar. Um, could just made it look also effortless with what he did. Um, he was in a couple of the Samo Hungs as well in the 80s, sort of a, like an extra, but he never really got to shine as much as he did uh, when he was being directed by uh, Lil Ka Lung. And that's why just I love this movie, just on that sole basis, it is uh, Sel Ho in the lead as well. So Sayuk goes to a Manchu gymnasium as he is such a hothead and beats the crap out of them, basically. I mean, watch this movie for, the, like I say, the very, just his performance alone, because so he really is giving it all here. Uh, one of the best martial arts performances you will ever see. And watch the way he moves and the height he gets on some of these jumps, and it's just incredible stuff, a real true gifted performer. The whole reason he is doing this is because he has a beef with the monk and thinks the Manchus are sort of hiding him at one point. Again, he's just assuming. He's just, this is all just what he's concocted in his head that he's put together. The Manchus are obviously not very happy that Sayuk come in and started on their school, go to the Canton Club uh, to it, like sort of explain. I mean, if Sayuk would have just listened and thought about things before acting, this whole mess could have been totally and utterly avoided. But he just barges in there, crashes in. They'll give him three days to hand Sayuk over and plan is to hide Sayuk and his brother in the... 
where do you reckon they're going to hide? It could be there's a numerous there's several places they could hide, but you probably know where they're going to go. Um, you guessed it, the Shaolin Temple. His mum agrees to take the blame for him in his place. They still do touch on that dynamic Sayuk has with his mum and is always usually defending him and taking his side, something that was further expanded upon much, much more and to much more uh, comedic effect in the Fong Sayuk Jet Li movie. But before she takes the blame, the Manchu chief has to see if he can prize her leg, legs open. Uh, I mean, that seems a fair trade, right? Look how long has to sort of try and prize her legs open, which she can't do. So we go to the temple and Sayuk is still being cocky and misbehaving. They start with this exercise called the roof, I think it's called the roof jump wall walk, if I remember that rightly, I think that's what it's called, um, and which Sayuk is able to do with ease. Like I say, he's already a talented guy. He's already, he doesn't need to any training really. After getting caught trying to sneak out at night, they are told to practice both day and night. Like, this is what can be infuriating about this character is that he is there for his own protect, like, he's there to be protected, right, for his own protection. The monk Santi is trying to help him, and all he does is misbehave. Uh, he's just always going against, like, they're trying to help him out, but he's always misbehaving and just trying to get do something or go against protocol, whatever it may be. And say so for most of the movie, he doesn't really learn anything as such. That's what this film, it almost feels like, oh, so what did, did anything change there with the Sayuk character? And as I say, it's not like there's no big character growth going on. He gets put in charge of washing up and he's not there to learn Kung Fu as he already knows it. So the monks are trying to help him, like, you know, do what keep him safe and keep him busy. So once again, he sneaks out via like waterway to go to the annual lantern festival party. Though he gets there and Han Chinese are not allowed in, so once again he gets there, gets to this place and he just starts causing loads of trouble. This is what Sayuk said. He says a bit of pattern with, with this Fong Sayuk um, character in this movie because he's just always looking for... It's a bit like actually how Jet Li is in uh, the 1993 Corey Yun movie. He's, he's always more than up for a fight. Like He's always up for a scrap. He's always up for a rumble. Um, I think Sun Chen is here uh, just briefly in the background. Uh, Sun Chen being of the Venom mob. I'm pretty sure, Sun, if I recall, Sun Chen is in that scene. I might have to go and double check that. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he is. So this Manchu in charge of the party wants to know more about the lay members of the 36th chamber and lets him go as he tries to befriend Sayuk and feels he can get information out of him seeing what they're up to at the Shaolin Temple, basically. He's going to use Sayuk to sort of figure out what's happening at the Shaolin Temple, what are they training, what are they doing, that kind of thing. Um, Sayuk sneaks out again and starts revealing Shaolin moves and his Kung Fu skills and belittling like sort of the guy's men. Sayuk, of course, totally and utterly unaware as what the, this guy is up to. The man chooses to keep him sweet, giving this rather extravagant yellow vest that he starts to show off to his fellow students back at the temple. He gets caught sneaking out after Santi finds the vest. He then leaves the temple, basically, as he's not working. It's not working out for him, he says. I think he actually says that. He says, it's not working out. Or Gordon Lou says it, but it's like, it's not working out. I'm leaving. I'm off. I'm not enjoying it here. Um, he's like, I'm, I'm going. Um, so... He leaves, he goes to his new friend who is insulted that he got thrown out because of this vest that he got. He plans to kill Sayuk, basically, but first decides to get Sayuk to bring more brothers of his from the temple to the chief man's shoes. The whole idea is, like, they can ambush them, basically. Lure them out, we can ambush them, we can take them out, and we can sort of, you know, have a big swoop on sort of some Shaolin temple members all at once. So Sayuk sneaks back in to tell his brothers about the wedding banquet that is happening between Han and Amanchu. Again, there really isn't much, if any, training in this movie. As I lead, I know I keep saying that, but when you think of a 36 Chamber movie, you think at, of having training in it, like seeing a lot of the chambers. You didn't in the second one, you didn't see much in the second one, and you don't in this film either. It's only really the first film that has that let's see different chambers going on here where Fong Sayuk is already a fighter he can already fight he can already um sort of you know he's got skills he can brawl and things like that. he can kick he can punch here there's no there's not real an emphasis on the uh training as such the training sort of is neither here nor there uh, in this film don't expect to see loads of different chambers and training techniques and matter of fact as I say you don't really see much of the temple at all I don't think by and large, throughout this movie, there is much you see of the actual temple. It's largely just sort of him sneaking in, sneaking out, um, going to see this Manchu sort of general guy um, or governor, whatever he may be. So 
plus one point uh, plus one to the temple we aren't stuck there either like like with the previous movies uh, look where he keeps sneaking out you know like in the first movie once we're in the temple we're there returns the same once uh, gordon lou gets in we're there this film we're in but we keep on sneaking out all the time like we it just you know santi uh, it just mixes it up a little bit so actually as the films have gone on you've sort of spent less uh, in the temple, uh, sort of as the film goes on, but the first one in particular, you, you're there for a you know a good while. So Santi finds these wedding invitations and thinks it's a trap. Um, you know, well it would be, but of course it's going to be a trap. So at the banquet, the wine is poisoned, and Santi arrives with Sayuk's mum. And even during this, even during this, Sayuk still thinks Santi is wrong, and that the Manchus mean no harm. Again, it's like you feel like just. Wake up, Fong Sayuk. Just please wake up. I'm trying to help you. They are bad. They're going to kill you. They want to kill you. They got. They want to poison you. I'm here to help. And he's still. He's still totally, totally unaware. Um, you know, I mean, God, the amount of times this monk has tried to help guard and protect this kid. Um, it's great stuff, of course, when the fight breaks out here with Lily Lee dodging all the spears. So Yuk finally learns of the chief's plan and the poison from the wine begins to take effect on him. Santi gets out his chain whip in order to defend so, like Sayuk. I mean, they are absolutely surrounded at the end of this movie. That is what's so cool uh, with what Liu Kaolung does here with this finale. Like, they are completely surrounded. And I always um, thought Liu Kaolung was very good at directing big crowd scenes. Um, there's a lot of them in, um, I think it's Marshall Club. There's a lot of crowd scenes in that. Uh, Challenge of the Masters as well. There's that where When he does direct, he, he seems to have a very good talent for directing big scenes with a lot of people in frame. Um, so they are completely surrounded. They haven't just got like 10 guys around them. No, there are loads of Manchus here trying to fight them at the end. And I mean loads. I, I say, I get the full always thought that was one of his gifts as like director was his ability to like direct crowd scenes and big numbers. Really hard to keep track sometimes. And I love how the fight even goes to the roof and then we'll try to cross the chief's pond that he has, which is quite cool. I mean, it really is a great epic final fight, even if it does take Sayuk ages to see the truth because he's so caught up and wrapped up in his own ways and what he thinks is right and what he you know what he's actually believing but he does finally finally realize and see the truth about what is happening he gets there eventually and you like to think this like this for say a huge lesson <laughs> was meant to be learned uh you like to think the say in this really did pick something up hopefully learn a lesson from this movie to not be you know, hear, maybe sometimes hear what another person's got to say or hear their side of the story. And it ends really oddly with Sayuk basically spitting the poison he swallowed from his mouth into the chief Manchu's mouth. He just basically gobs into this guy's face, into his mouth. Now, if that isn't a lovely way to end a kung fu movie, then I don't know what is. And as I mentioned, while it's not my favourite of the three... There's still a lot of fun to be had here. Watch it um, for Sal Ho's performance because I say it's not so much, I don't have a problem with him at all, but the character sometimes in this can be a bit infuriating because he's, like I say, he's very headstrong and he sometimes just jumps in without just seeing the full picture kind of thing. But it's a wonderful performance from Sal Ho. And if you enjoy Sal Ho and you like, you know, him as a martial artist and a kung fu style, please make sure to check out Mad Monkey Kung Fu, which I will hopefully be getting around to reviewing very, very soon. But there's still a lot of fun to be had here. And it's a great that each part of the trilogy has a very different feel. Um, never, ever does Liu Ka Lung just copy and paste, rinse and repeat here. Each one of the 36th Chamber movies are um, very different in their own right. But you might like this one more than the other two if you do fair play to you and i'm really pleased you do but there's a there's a lot of um there's a lot to be enjoyed in all of the movies they really are a fantastic uh kung fu by loosely connected trilogy um which is you know you've got to check them out if you're a kung fu guy you're into your kung fu movies you've got to got to check them out so thank you very much indeed for watching i hope you enjoyed the review and i'll see you again soon Concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory.